Africa is the youngest continent in the world, with 60% of the population under age 25. Africa, in my view, is the last and largest emerging market and offers the last big supply chain and consumer prospects, with opportunities much like the ones that we saw in Southeast Asia 20 years ago. So do I have your attention? So you now know why Africa should be on your radar, but let's zoom on in on why Kenya should be your target destination. And here are some of the reasons. Kenya is the most stable democracy in East Africa. Kenya is the gateway to the East African market of almost 500 million consumers. Kenya is the regional logistics hub. Kenya is the leading finance hub. Kenya is the leading destination for foreign direct investment and venture capital. And Kenya has the Silicon Savalli, Silicon Savannah, with super smart engineers and a dedicated and entrepreneurial workforce. Kenya generates over 90% of its energy from renewable sources, and Kenya's largest export market is the United States of America. Let me repeat, Kenya's largest export market is the United States, and we feel that Kenya is ready for export liftoff as it diversifies. So let's unpack a couple of those thoughts. I arrived in Kenya days before the August 2022 general elections. What I witnessed was nothing short of remarkable. Kenya held what many analysts and commentators say was the freest, fairest, most credible election in Kenyan history. The election was observed by international and local election organizations and upheld by the Supreme Court of the Republic of Kenya. Power was transferred orderly and peacefully. Gateway to East Africa. As I said, Kenya's population is 56 million people, but more importantly, it is the gateway to East Africa with a combined population of over 500 million. 80% of the East African regional trade passes through the, the port of Mombasa. In addition, Jomo Kenyatta International in Nairobi is the busiest airport in East Africa, served by 40 passenger airlines, and, third, and 25 cargo carriers, including DHL and FedEx. And Kenya, in recent years, has built some amazing infrastructure. Nairobi's vibrant technology community is already known as the Silicon Savannah, and the Kenyan government is committed to establishing Nairobi as the premier destination for, the tech, sector, for tech sector investment and innovation in Africa. Many U.S. companies have already figured this out, and they've decided that they need to be in Kenya, including the names that you see on the screen. Less known, but also hugely impactful tech companies like Copia Global, Semiconductor Technologies Limited, Twiga Foods, Market Force, Power Financial Wellness, and many electric vehicle startups are here too. And I have met these companies, I've visited their operations, and I see what, ha what is happening here, has, and what, they, what is happening here is there, that you all have many of the critical components that make Silicon Savannah a reality. At the nexus of finance and technology sits one of the most impressive companies that I have ever seen, M-Pesa. M-Pesa mobile, mobile Money was developed by Kenyan innovators in 2007, and by 2010, M-Pesa had become the largest mobile money network in the world. M-Pesa generates annual revenues of over $1.3 billion. $360 billion pass through the network every single year. And the platform has an open API with over 60,000 developers developing apps for M-Pesa. M-Pesa solved one of the biggest challenges in the mobile money market sector. Mobile, secure, ubiquitous, and low-cost payments. Many of you may not know, M-Pesa has over 50 million customers in seven countries on the continent and is involved in 70% of Kenyan transactions and 59% of the GDP of Kenya flows through M-Pesa. So, I know a little bit about this kind of business because when I was at eBay, I bought PayPal and managed PayPal for almost 10 years. And M-Pesa alone is a remarkable achievement 
But I think importantly, what it does is it demonstrates the brilliant business minds at work here in Africa in devising African solutions to global problems. Kenya leads in foreign direct investment and venture capital as well. While venture capital flows decreased by 35% globally last year, total funding in Africa actually increased by 8%. And more impressively, while venture capital to Nigeria was down 36% and essentially flat in South Africa, funding to Kenya increased by 33%, one of the highest growth rates on the continent. <laughs> Adjusted for GDP, Kenya receives significantly more venture capital than anywhere else on the continent, generating roughly triple the venture capital to GDP ratios of Nigeria, Egypt, and South Africa. And unlike its continental competitors who attract predominantly fintech-led investments, Kenya venture flows are more diverse, led by e-commerce and clean tech, followed by fintech, agritech, and enterprise investments. And what's even more unique for Kenya Venture Capital is that in 2022, female-led uh, startups raised $146 million in equity, again, more than any other country on the continent. I like to say, you go, girls. More than 90% of Kenya's on-grid electricity is currently generated from renewable sources, as we said, primarily geothermal, wind, and solar. A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of, vi of visiting Capetto Wind Farm in Kajiado County. Capetto is the second largest wind farm in Kenya and is proudly supported by the United States International Development Finance Corporation and Power Africa. It is amazing that Kenya has committed to reach 100% renewable energy by 2030 and is already close to achieving that goal. From a workforce perspective, Kenya is English speaking, has high literacy rates, and a strong primary, secondary, and tertiary education system. In fact, 86% of the labor force has some post-secondary education, outpacing the regional average of 72%. And the country boasts some excellent universities and every single firm I have talked to in Kenya raves about the quality of their Kenyan workforce. In 2022, yeah, you can clap. <laughs> in 2022, the United States, as I said, became Kenya's largest export market, edging ahead of neighboring Uganda. Sorry about that, Uganda. In, in total, Kenya exported about 890 million goods uh, to the United States last year. In addition, the United States exported around $600 million in goods to Kenya, $1.5 billion in total U.S.-Kenya trade, and it's fairly balanced and is expected to increase as the United States and Kenya negotiate the first of its kind bilateral trade agreement between the United States and a sub-Saharan African country. The Strategic Trade and Investment Partnership, known as STIP, referenced early, is definitely a step in the right direction. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> this agreement, once signed, will be a model for the rest of the continent. So what does that mean for you? Well, entering Kenya now or expanding your business dramatically now in Kenya provides first mover advantages. Because labor, international pro intellectual property rights, regulatory and other standards set here will help shape the business environment in the rest of the region. So. Now you know why I am so enthusiastic about the Kenya investment climate. But I will note, there is room for improvement, just like in any country, including the United States. The Kenyan government, however, has made great strides and is committed to increasing the business-friendly environment. If, this is, if it is to accomplish this goal, the government will have to address the following items. And the first is taxes. Kenya must have a consistent, transparent, and fairly administered national tax policy to attract and retain foreign direct investment and accelerate economic growth. As you all know, more work needs to be done to establish a durable tax framework, but we've been working with the President's team and CS Korea on this, and we expect some changes to be announced quite soon. Without a doubt, corruption is also a critical issue and one that must be addressed for Kenya to reach its full potential in all areas of development. 
Corruption leads to misuse of public resources, slows economic growth and job creation, and damages the investment climate. Corruption also undermines equal participation in the prosperity of this country and erodes public trust in institutions. However, while corruption does remain a challenge in Kenya as in other developing markets, third-party measures of corruption indicate positive trends and modest progress in the last few years. According to the U.S. Millennium Challenge Corporation country scorecards for 2023, Kenya's score for control of corruption was 0.28, representing its third passing score in a row and the highest score to date. To put this number in context, and I bet you will, this will surprise you, Kenya's 0.28 was superior to India's 0.18 and Vietnam's 0.19. Kenya, like many developing countries, is burdened with high debt, limiting its ability to invest uh, in line with its ambitions. According to the IMS, Kenya's debt-to-GDP ratio is 69%, but this number is not an outlier among regional averages. For comparison, Malaysia's debt-to-GDP stood at 69% in 2021, and India's ratio was 83% in 2022. Another issue I often hear about is cargo clearance. And despite improving logistics infrastructure, the delivered cost of a container shipment to Kenya does remain significantly higher than container shipments landing, uh, from Europe, landing in Europe or Asia. While there is room for improvement on cost, clearance times at the port of Mombasa have been reduced from over 11 days in 2010 to 3.5 days in 2022. And this reduction is despite cargo consistently increasing over the last five years, from 27 million metric tons in 2016 to nearly 35 million metric tons in 2021. I'd like to take this opportunity to put to rest the argument that Kenya is not a manufacturing country. True, Kenya has room to grow in this sector, but manufacturing is happening here. And let me give you a few examples. Gearbox. A high-mix, low-flow electronics manufacturer in Nairobi runs a state-of-the-art surface mount assembly line. And in November 2022, they began manufacturing Raspberry Pi's Pico product for the African market. Gearbox's production quality meets or exceeds that of Raspberry Pi's other production sites in Wales and in Japan, producing a first-pass yield of 99.6%. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Semiconductor Technologies Limited, STL, is a US-owned semiconductor manufacturing and nanotechnology company domiciled in Kenya. It's growing rapidly and has hired more than 80 Kenyan engineers in the past two years. Kenya's Revital Healthcare is one of the largest manufacturer of medical products in Africa producing 48 devices and exporting to 28 countries. Isuzu's East Africa assembly plant has been operating in Nairobi since 1977, selling more than 90,000 units with over 15 models. And there is also, as I mentioned, a robust, growing electric vehicle manufacturing and assembly industry in Kenya. Kenya, I believe, is the future for Africa's two- and three-wheel e-mobility and e-businesses, and e-buses. So lastly, when we talk about trade, we must talk about apparel and apparel manufacturing. Last year, Kenya recorded its highest ever, ever apparel exports to the United States, over $540 million. The industry here employs over 200,000 people, mostly young women. And leading U.S. apparel brands sourcing from Kenya today include PVH, which includes Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein, Contour, which includes Lee and Wrangler, and several more, including Walmart and Levi's. And what we hear is that these brands want more Kenyan apparel manufacturing, both because of the high quality of labor and for Kenya's leadership in renewable energy. Brands are steadily moving production to Kenya from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, and China because of what Kenya has to offer. And more of this is on the way. There's something happening here but What it is ain't exactly clear 
In the words of Canadian, uh, the Canadian-American rock band Buffalo Springfield from their 1967 song, For What It's Worth, and I bet some of you under the age of 40 are going to have to Google that, <laughs> there's something happening here. But unlike the song's second line, but what it is ain't exactly clear, it is abundantly clear to me, and I hope now abundantly clear to you, that this is the place to do business in Africa. Now, if you are not convinced, because there, there may be a few skeptics out there, um, there are a few more data points to muck around in. So major US companies have already made the jump to Africa with regional or continental-wide headquarters in Kenya, many previously mentioned. Major multinationals have regional offices in Kenya, powerhouses like LG, Toyota, Volkswagen, Peugeot, Standard Charter, and Old Mutual. The medical ecosystem in Kenya keeps expanding with Hologic, GE, Cigna, Pfizer, Abbott, and Varian Medical Systems already here. And there are more exciting developments happening every single day. American sports associations like the NBA, the NFL, MLB, MLS, and the entertainment icon, the Grammys, are all currently looking for a foothold in Kenya. The television and movie industries are discovering Kenya as well. Just look at the fact that Kenya now has a Real Housewives of Nairobi. <laughs> so stay tuned as, the, as President Ruto has more exciting announcements tomorrow. Is this wild? <laughs> so since my arrival, uh, my team and I at the embassy have been working to strengthen U.S.-Kenya uh, trade and investment relationships alongside the Chamber of Commerce and the government of Kenya. And as Secretary Blinken said in his Vital Partners Shared Priorities speech from South Africa last August, the United States and African nations can't achieve any of our shared priorities if we don't work together as equal partners. So you now know why investing in Africa and investing in Kenya makes so much sense. And I am delighted to be working with the Chamber, working with the government of Kenya, and all of you to promote our shared prosperity. I'm excited to see what relationships and deals come out of this summit, and I wish all of you the very best. Thank you very much.